What's up, guys? Welcome back to the prediction show for UFC 290 International Fight Week. You got Alexander Volkanovsky taking on Yair Rodriguez and Brandon Moreno taking on Alexandre Pantoja. Super excited for these fights, but me and Priest are here and we are going to be predicting the co main event and the main event for UFC 290 and International Fight Week. We are also going to be in attendance all week filming some episodes for you guys. So we are super excited. But kicking things off in the co-main event, you have Brandon Moreno taking on Alexandre Pantoja for the third time. Moreno is the minus 170 favorite and Pantoja is the plus 145 underdog. Priest, what do you think is going down in this fight? I believe Moreno can beat Pantoja. I believe Brandon Moreno can beat Pantoja. Look at the first fight on the Ultimate Fighter when they fought each other. Moreno comes out aggressive, landing bombs, cuts up uh, Pantoja. Second round comes. Pantoja has a very good high-level fight IQ. Is saying, I can't stand with Moreno. I'm getting pieced up. I might lose this fight. So he switches to grappling and wrestling. Gets Moreno on his back, down to the floor, submits him. Fast forward, Brandon Moreno goes on into the UFC. Pantoja does too. Brandon gets cut in 2018. Comes back on a three-fight win streak. Fights Figadevo, who is the best 125-pound fighter on the planet in his prime at UFC 256. That was Brandon Moreno's bear moment. UFC 256 was Brandon Moreno's burn moment, saying, I can belong with this best, the best fighters in the world. I am here to prove that I will be the first Mexican-born champion, which he does. UFC 263, fights Figadevo again, slips him into a rear naked choke, wins, becomes champion. Now he's riding sky high, and just no one can stop him. I don't know. I think... What you said there is that he's just so confidence building right now. And us being around him, he's just so clear. And he's at such peace in his life. No matter what happens on fight night, nothing is going to change the fact that his family loves him. That everyone around him loves him. So going into a fight, there is zero pressure on himself. He puts zero pressure on himself going into a fight, and I think that's what's made the difference in his performances. You look at the third fight, and he's talked about this against Figgy. He fought angry, and he fought like he was the champion, and he had this pressure, and he had to go out there and stop Figueredo, and he lost. And I think coming into this fight, he has zero pressure on himself to beat Pantoja. Yes, he lost to, lost to him in the Ultimate Fighter. Yes, he lost to him in the UFC, but he knows deep down inside he is the better fighter in this matchup and I think it's going to show July 8th. And Moreno's done an incredible job on mixing his grappling and with his striking, leading yes. the opponent's guessing. So I am rocking with Brandon Moreno in this one. I think I'm going to rock with Brandon Moreno too. I think his wrestling has been super underrated. You saw in the last fight against Figgy. He took him down twice, but he does have to be careful with the submissions. In the fourth Figgy fight, he got trapped in two guillotines on two attempts on a takedown. And Pantoja's Brazilian jiu-jitsu is very, very good. He has four submission wins in the UFC. He submitted Brandon Royval. He submitted Alex Perez. So his submissions are very, very good. So if Brandon Moreno is going to try to take this, to the, take this fight to the ground, which I think he will, he's got to be very, very careful of the submissions. But I think Brandon Moreno's IQ is just on a whole nother level than it was the first and the second fight against Pantoja. And I think he knows that. So I'm going to rock with Brandon Moreno. I agree. So you're so, going Brandon. Moreno, Moreno. Hey, we're one for one. That doesn't happen very often when we do these prediction shows. Not at all. All right, one for one. So moving into the main event, you have the pound for pound best fighter in the UFC, Alexander Volkanovsky Alexander. taking on Yair Rodriguez. Volkanovsky is the minus 425 favorite. 425, That's and Yair's insane. a plus 325 underdog. So, Priest, what do you got going down in this fight? Yair needs to keep this one on the feet, stay at range, keep it on the outside, possibly land a head kick or a flying knee. But Yair does something that is super good. He uses his body kicks. He uses his leg kicks to open up striking like he did at UFC 284 against Josh Emmett. But Volkanovski 
is a bull, dude. <laughs> a walking bull, just willing to die in there, takes a fight to you. I believe if Volkanovski wants to win this fight, he's going to have to keep this one on the ground. But he does a very good job of mixing in his grappling. I'm going with Volkanovski, TKO on the ground. You think TKO? Yes. I just, uh, I don't know. This fight is super hard to me because you have Volk, who's just going to go out there and do Volk things. He's going to take the fight to you. He's going to throw a lot of different feints at you. He's going to make you guess. He's a master of chess. He's playing chess with you. He's making you guess. He's throwing a lot of feints. He's doing a lot of uh, stance switches. But yeah, here's a dog, man. He's just going to go out there and he's going to fight. He doesn't care about playing chess, playing the mind games. He's a Mexican warrior and he's going to go out there and take the fight to Volkanovski. But I think there's one thing that a lot of people are missing on Yair. And it's his clinch game. If you saw in the Josh Emmett fight, Josh Emmett was forcing the issue and he was bringing him to the clinch and landing a lot of knees to the body. And I think that's what Islam did very good against Volk. Volk would rush in and he would clinch with him. He would throw a lot of knees to the body. He even landed a lot of knees to the face as well. So if Yair has seen that from Islam thinking, okay, as soon as Volk's enter, be ready to throw knees. He could put Volk out, man. I think Volk sometimes rushes in just a little too much, which could open for some flying knees and a lot of knees to the body. Nonetheless, Volk is the GOAT, man. He's very, very good. He's technical in all areas, wrestling, on the feet, kicking, striking. So it's a really tough fight for me to pick. I'm going to lean Volkanovski, but I would not be shocked if Yair wins this fight. So it's a prediction show. Who are you picking? I'm taking Volkanovski. I think he's going to win. You're going to take Volkanovski. I think he's the pound for pound best in the UFC right now. I think anywhere in the fight, he's better. A lot of people said, oh, well, his striking isn't that good. Max Holloway can piece him up. Goes into the third fight with Max Holloway. Puts a clinical striking against Max Holloway. And Max Holloway is arguably the best boxer in the entire UFC. So I think his hands are very good. I think his wrestling is very good. You saw it. He took down Islam. So I think anywhere in this fight, he is better than Yair. But Yair is a dog man. He could come out here. He could win this fight. But I am rocking with Volk. And that will do it for the prediction show. We're two for two. Two for two, me and Phoenix. Wow, that's very shocking. A lot of times we are not two for two. <laughs> no, not but at all. But that's going to do it for the prediction show. Like always, like, comment, and subscribe at the Burn Factory Podcast. We'll see you guys in Las Vegas. This is the Burn Factory. This is the Burn Factory.